So nowadays there is tons of different gaming mice out there on the market, and most companies are shifting towards lightweight wireless mice. This is a budget gaming mouse that I found on Amazon, and it looks a lot like the Glorious Model O. I would say it's more like a mix between the Model O and the Logitech G Pro, because it has the honeycomb cutouts, but it's also a little more flat and basic than the Model O's design. Now, this can be picked up for around $30, so is it any good? Let's take a look. So the unboxing experience was very bare bones. The mouse comes in some bubble wrap inside a box, and you get the manuals, and lastly, a charging cord. Then you have the mouse itself and the USB receiver. The mouse is turned on by a slider on the bottom. The first setting will turn the mouse on with RGB, and if you flip the switch all the way to the top, the mouse is powered on without the RGB so that you can save a bit of battery life. The shape and the comfort of the mouse is actually really good. It's a very nice ergonomic shape and feels very nice in the hand. It's all plastic, including the sides, though I wish the sides of the mouse were rubber, since anytime a mouse has rubber side grips, it provides a lot more grip while holding the mouse. The left and right click buttons are also really nice. They are very clicky with great feedback and have a satisfying click to it. It's actually a little nicer feeling than my main gaming mouse, which is the Razer Viper Ultimate, though the buttons do require slightly more pressure to click. The scroll wheel is also pretty decent, it's responsive and pretty smooth. The macro buttons on the left side, however, feel really cheap. These are extremely mushy and do not have great feedback. You can see that when I click on one button, the other one actually pushes in. It also has a DPI adjustment button on the top of the mouse, which I found cycles between three different speeds. I tend to use it on the slowest setting, which to me feels around 800 DPI the same setting I have on my Viper Ultimate. So everything so far seems pretty good. The entire palm area and the buttons have holes in them, and there's even holes at the bottom of the mouse. Usually this is all done to save weight, and on my scale it comes up to be around 80 grams. Even with all the holes, like the Model O, it's still about 10 grams heavier, though as a mouse itself, it's still considered a lightweight mouse, which is good. So the holes shave off a good amount of weight, but I also heard the holes are supposed to provide better ventilation for some gamers with sweaty hands. I didn't really notice much difference with my palms personally, but my hands generally do not get hot or sweaty while gaming anyway. So how does this thing actually perform? With all the positives I mentioned earlier, this is probably the biggest drawback to the mouse. And performance is obviously the most important thing in a gaming mouse, right? So it uses a traditional red optical sensor, which is fine. The tracking is okay, though not the smoothest. And through some measuring, the polling rate comes out to be around 290 hertz. Now I'm very used to the tracking and smoothness of 1000 hertz, so this doesn't feel as smooth or comfortable, but it's still okay for gaming. The problem with the sensor is that when you move the mouse very fast or flick it side to side, the sensor has issues tracking accurately, and starts moving the cursor crazy everywhere. This doesn't happen on mice with really good sensors, but it's happening here. If you are gaming and use a lot of fast movements or flicks, this mouse will sometimes lose traction. Another big problem with this mouse is that it has trouble gliding, and I find that there's too much friction. I don't know if the mouse feet are bad, or the mouse is not elevated enough and the holes are actually cutting into the mouse pad, but when using a mouse pad or even on a hard surface, there's too much friction on the mouse and it makes it hard and inconsistent to move around. While playing StarCraft, I found it sometimes difficult to accurately click and move my units around because the bottom of the mouse is just too rough. I wonder if they made the feet a little taller, maybe that will lift the bottom of the mouse a little bit higher from the surface, but right now, I think it's way too rough. If you are just doing some casual gaming, the mouse will still perform okay, but I definitely wouldn't use this for extremely competitive gaming. 
So that's my quick review on this AVM Ton wireless gaming mouse. I really wanted this to be great. Like the budget sleeper gaming mouse that looks and performs like a $70 one, but is actually half of that. But unfortunately, this is not the case here. It's still an okay gaming mouse, and if you really want a wireless mouse with this kind of RGB and all the holes in it, and you don't really go too intensive on the mouse flicks, then I guess you can get this one. But honestly, for the price, I would just go for something else that glides a lot better and has a better sensor even if that means getting something wired. So that's it for this quick look on this AVM Ton wireless gaming mouse. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.